So therefore, I thought God hated me. So I grew up thinking God hated me all those years. Okay, wait, we have to stop there now. Wait a minute. Hey everybody, it's me, Julianne Hartman with The Journey, and we're so excited today to be here in Colorado um, giving you this story, which is going to be incredible. There's many, many healings that have taken place in this beautiful woman's life. I'd like to introduce you to Melanie Sanchez. Well, welcome and thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much. So I have known Melanie kind of off and on for a long time because I've been coming to Summer Family Bible Conference and I always see her. And so, you know, we've like, hi, hello, you know, giving each other hugs but never really knew much about you. Um, and then just like recently, we started talking more. And as I've talked to her, oh my gosh, the stories that have come out of her have been incredible. And I know that this is something that you all need and you, you need to hear and you will definitely grow from this. You will learn from this. You will literally see your life change from this. So Melanie, all right, so let's do this. Let's start off with what was life like for you growing up like were you were you a christian as you grew up like when did christ come into your life so i grew up as a catholic okay. um my parents took me to catholic church all the way growing up and stuff and, okay um, you did your first communion and you did all that catechism and catechism all that. all that stuff and i had to confess do the confession and <laughs> yes. stuff like that and um but because of some trauma I went through from the time I was eight until I was 11, my babysitter sons had brutally raped me and stuff. I went to the confession and uh, because I committed an affair, so I thought I didn't confess that to a priest. So therefore I thought God hated me so I grew up thinking God hated me all those years. Okay, wait, we have to stop there now. Wait a minute. You were brutally raped by your babysitter's sons. Yes. Oh my God, that is awful. I mean, see, I'm hearing this all for the first time. I mean, of course, when you meet somebody, you don't just go, hey, how are you? Oh yeah, fine, great. I'm good now because I was brutally raped when I was a kid. <laughs> yes. So I'm hearing this all for the first time. That is terrible. Yes. Where, where was, what, what was wrong with that woman? Did she not know? Did, I mean, how did that happen? Well, she uh, found us one time early on in this and she sent him to his room and she grabbed me by the arm, got her husband's belt with, uh, it was leather with metal rings, took me to the, another room and spanked me bare bottom. And she called me some choice names and said, how dare you tempt my son like that? Oh my God, yeah. And I lived with those names in my head all these years. Oh my gosh, Melanie, uh, wait. So she did not think it was her sons. She thought it was you tempting her sons. As an eight-year-old. As an eight-year-old. How old were the boys? The one was four years older than me. The other one, I believe, was two years older than him. Um, the reason why I tell this story is because many years later, we found out I had a seizure disorder okay. due to this. Um, we didn't know. I had the seizure started when I was 14. Um, and I started slurring my words in school and stuff. And my vision uh, went, um, I could look at the paper. I was writing my name, but I couldn't see the board. Some of the words were missing and stuff. I hit my head against somebody and they thought I had, that was causing it. My fingers went numb. And so it was really confusing, confusing and stuff. And Nobody for all these years knew what was going on with me and no doctor had seen what was going on. I was having them in Bible college when I was attending Bible college. Uh, I was in my t late 20s when I went to Bible college. And when I graduated, I had some other things happen. 
and um, they found a spinal cord tumor. Uh, I, lungs. I, I graduated from Bible college and um, we prayed, God, remove everything that's been hidden in darkness and bring it to light. Mm. We didn't know what was going to happen. Don't pray that prayer. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh that, please. That's terrible. Well, we I proceeded to have both of my knees dislocated. My back go out. Car accident took out my left shoulder. Okay, wait, wait. <laughs> Melly, this is, okay, we have to like, hold on. This is crazy. Okay, let's go back to the abuse that was taking place because there's so much here. Yeah. Okay. All right, so. The woman was blaming you for this. What about your parents? Did you not ever say anything? No, didn't tell any. Didn't tell my parents that. Why um, not? Years later, I I couldn't formulate that until Ugh. much later. Why I never told anybody? Right. Oh, and I understand, but they they didn't know what was going on. They didn't so, yeah. know what was going on, okay. and um, this family situations were really difficult and stuff my dad and I are really alike so we butt heads okay um so that's really a struggle for my story and okay. it's very hard to put that out in the of internet. course I understand so let me ask you a question was uh so your parents had to go to work so they were they sent you obviously to a babysitter yeah and it was at their house yeah so just to help other people because everybody watches this journey right so it's not just the, mom, the young moms, it's not just the grandparents, it's not just people that are, you know, dealing with sickness. So was, so your parents did not know this was happening. No. And you didn't even know how to, to talk about it. So let me ask you this, what would you think, or what would you say to somebody whose kids are going to being, ba you know, being babysat by somebody, what are some questions you might ask them, just even if nothing's going on, that just in case there is anything going on, are there any questions that you can think of that you could have someone ask their child, their grandchild, just to see if there's anything happening in that babysitter's home? For one thing, if, you're, if your kids are begging or asking, mom, let me babysit myself, let me babysit myself. Okay there might be a reason why they're asking okay so yeah. many times let me babysit myself there might be a reason for that okay um i a lot of the times would ask can i babysit my brother or not am i because i was trying to get away from mm. the situation um when my neighbor would ask would invite us to come over to her house and let us stay for, with her for a week. I was like, please, please, mom, let us stay over there. Um, and my mom would let us for a week right. at a time and stuff during the summer. And yeah. I so appreciated that. And um, that was a great time to get away and everything. And um, during the school year after school and stuff, I would stay at school with the teacher and mm. help her clean the classroom and uh, just look for reasons uh, to get away. Uh, and I had teachers that let, would let me help them in the classroom. Uh, teachers didn't have a clue what was going on, but um, I had a really favorite teacher that would let me do that and reward me by taking me out to dinner and stuff like that. Wow. Gosh, you know, Melanie, with what you just told me, was this like every day or was it, you know? Yeah. Okay. So. Wow, and you know what's horrible is that how do those boys even know what to do? Like, you know, they obviously were watching something, seeing something. You know, that's not normal. Let's see, if you were eight, he was four years old, or eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and mm -hmm. then the other one was 14. That's just not, I mean, back then, you're not 20, right? Yeah. So back then, it's like, you know, they didn't have access to a phone like they have now. But let me say this, because I know for me right now, I like, I want to kill those kids, right? Yeah. So how do you deal with that? Like, how do you, how did you handle that? I know that's been, I'm kind of like going a little skipping way into the future, but now as a born again Christian and knowing like, you know, that there is sin in the world and that there's people that are suffering from all kinds of crazy that would even have them even have the thought to do something like that to a kid. How, how do you not hate them? I hate them right now in this story. Well, when I was 18, before I was saved, I went and confronted the one 
and found out what his age was and um, found out that he was high and was on drugs. And, at 14. At 14. And he said he doesn't remember that time. He doesn't. And I came away realizing that his brother was probably ra raping him and doing all that. Mm. And he showed his brother what he was doing to get his brother off of him. That's why his brother started raping me. Um, and so fast forward, uh, when I got saved and somebody told me that God didn't hate me, that God loved me. And God gave me a picture that when that was happening, God was holding me and protecting me. Mm -hmm. And when I got that picture, it changed everything. Um, well, what's crazy too is that how you didn't get pregnant. Well, I was so young. I, yeah, that's true. I, I was so young. I don't think my body was able to do that. Okay. Um, I didn't get my period until I was 16. So yeah. I don't think my body was prepared for that okay. anyway. So praise God. <laughs> yeah. Well, how long did that go on? How long were you with that babysitter? Uh, until I was 11 years old. Okay. Wow. So I was there for three years. Um, so the second brother didn't get involved until I was nine years old. So I only had one, one boy for a year. And then I had two boys oh for God. two years. So Melanie, what, so you would go there after school, of course, before school and then after school. So, oh my gosh, your parents must have worked a job that required them to leave super early. Yeah. Okay. So then after school and, and they then, were right across from the school. Okay. So it was right from So you could just walk. Yeah. So okay. we would walk, we'd play across the street and we, we were in our, so during the summer she would take us to swim classes. So I attribute my ability to swim and stuff. Mm. So there were pluses. We were able to learn how to swim. Well, that's all but, that. Okay, that's great. But, that, but that we were in bathing suits. So well, that doesn't describes, take away from the fact that... <laughs> this describes some of the situation. Wow. We were running around in our bathing suits all the time. And so it made it easy access. Mm. Um, oh my so, God. But fast forward, when I became a Christian, uh, became born again and stuff, I fasted and I walked around this lake and I took that to God. And the first time around I would laid out and this wasn't something somebody told me to do. This was mm -hmm. something God put on my heart. And I walked around the lake and I poured out to God, why did he do this? Why? And I just poured it out. Now, and why the boy did it or why, why the God? boy did okay. it? Why, you know, why, why did this happen and stuff? And as I went around, God took care of my heart. Mm. And as I went around the second time, God healed that and helped mm. me forgive. And then it was the second boy. Then it came to her. The mom. And the mom, and he helped heal my heart. Now, it's not a one and done. No. It was layers and stuff. And at that time, I didn't know the full story. Mm. Because at that time, I didn't know it was right. You know, and I've heard this before. With, with uh, one of our interviews we did, uh, an Amish woman did not know that it was rape. She thought that that was what she was supposed to do with her dad. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I don't understand it, but I understand it more now. But, but again, at eight years old, how do you know that it's rape? I mean, how do you know that this is not a part of playing with a friend down the street? You know, it's like, how do you know? He told me it was sex. He told me this is how I show love. So that's what I thought love was. And Did you love that boy? Mm -hmm. I mean, in the freaky weird way. I mean, did you like fall in love with that boy? No. No, okay. No, and at a certain point, your body kind of turns into accepting that and you're, you get confused because your body likes it 
after a while. Right. It, it hurts at the beginning. And then your body turns into trades on you and likes it and stuff. So it gets confusing. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't until I started recovering and stuff that it wasn't sex. It wasn't. It wasn't out of love. Out of love. Yeah. So I was confused my whole life about what love was. Yes. Um, so when I was in a relationship and the thought of getting married and the marriage bed scared the living bejeebies out of me. I can imagine. So I've never been married. Oh, gosh. I've never been You married. are still young. There is still a man out there for you. Seriously. For me, I don't picture myself being okay. able to, so that for me Well, what I love healed. is you may not picture it, but God might bring somebody God, to you. That's so amazing. God can still do it, but for me, I still am not yeah. there. Um, but being able to see mm. that as part of my story, I didn't know it was rape until much later, until I was processing and dealing with the seizures. Because okay, the so, seizures, okay. the seizures I have were as a result. Of course. Of that trauma. Okay, so now, I hate to even say like we're past that, because that's just, that's a whole thing in itself. So, so then that was until you were 11. So what happened after you were 11? After I was 11, um, when I, uh, when I was 15, I started hanging out on the streets. Okay. Started going out with random men and just giving it away because God hates me anyways. Mm -hmm. And I didn't care about my body. I didn't care. Uh, I, and I'm lucky I never got pregnant. Praise God. I didn't get any diseases. That's a shock. Yeah. I, I one time I snuck out of the house. I went with a guy. He was taking me somewhere. I, it was so dangerous. Um, and I ended up somewhere in the city. I had no idea where I was. I ended up in this empty apartment. There was another guy in the apartment. I ended up with these two guys. And then he goes, I have to go to work. I'm leaving you here with this other guy. And I didn't know when he was gonna come back and when he was gonna take me home, I had school the next morning. My oh, parents God. didn't know I was even gone out of the house. Um, and they find, he finally came back and took me home in the middle of the morning. I was able to sneak back in the house without my parents ever knowing. I got maybe an hour or two of sleep and then I went to school in the morning without anybody knowing what oh, I had done. God. So where did you meet the guy? I just out on the streets and just kind of... No, this one a friend set up. And you didn't know he was bringing you to a place with another guy. So yeah. were you having sex with both of them? Yes. Okay. Um, oh, and... Melanie, I just... Oh. I can't. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, man. All right. So now... That was kind of like your life back then? I mean, because did you, did you get into drugs? I never got into drugs. Um, alcohol? Praise God. I did get into alcohol. I was drinking from the age of 15 until I got saved at, when did I get saved? I got saved in 95. Okay, so that was 28 years ago. Yes. Do the math. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was born in 1973, so. Okay. I, I think I was. So I don't have a calculator. <laughs> I was a daughter. I had a daughter um, at 20. Wait, you have a daughter? There's so much to you that I don't even know about. Okay. So, all right. So let, let's go. So then you were on the streets, just going with anybody. What's interesting is that usually we hear, oh, I was so high, but you were not. You were sober and still being with these men because that was the, on the, the treadmill you were on, I guess, mm -hmm. right? So you, God hated you as far as you knew. So why not give it away for, you know, anybody to abuse? So at 18, I finally decided I don't want this lifestyle. Okay. So I stopped, but I was still drinking. I was hanging around some of these friends and stuff, and I stopped hanging out with them. 
Now, mind you, I was in a girls' organization that okay. was goody two shoe, and I had Ooh. this pristine. I was perfect. I wore dress formals. I I was perfect. My mom was involved, and I was. I followed all the rules. I did everything perfect, but I had this other lifestyle. Yes. So. It was a shocker when all this came out at 20. At 20, I ended up meeting this man. And I walked, I met him through a friend and, um, and we were wrestling and stuff, the two, three of us and stuff. Nothing happened that day. The next day, she was working, I finished work, and I went over to see if he wanted to go to dinner because he was home, at her house all day. So I went over innocently to take him out to go and see if he wanted to go get some dinner. And I walked in the door and somehow we ended up on the floor wrestling. And I tried to stop him and understand I had the abuse as a child mm -hmm. and I was taught don't make any noise uh, because we didn't want to wake up the babysitter and the reason why the babysitter never knew what was going on is she slept during the day when she was supposed to be watching us because she was working as uh, a waitress at night to make extra money mm -hmm. when she was making money supposedly watching us right so I was not allowed to make noises back then. So I learned to be quiet and hold it all in. So when, um, when I walked into this house and this guy was there that was going to take to dinner, I was on the floor all of a sudden and he, he thought we were wrestling. Okay. And I, tried to stop him, but I couldn't use my voice. So I took my hand like this into his throat and he got stronger. I took my elbow like this into them and he got stronger. This was a big guy and very strong. And um, he worked at a correctional facility, very- Oh, so he very, was trained. Yeah. He's trained. Um, and he was mil past military and all that stuff. And I was trying to get him to stop and it couldn't verbalize no. And um, I, would, I learned as a child that the more you fight, uh, the more you get hurt. So I stopped fighting and I stopped, I couldn't verbalize and I went into survival mode. And at that point, a whole no, another personality came out and I didn't understand at that time what had happened and I just went with whatever was going on I got to the point where I said yes because that was survivor mode and uh, we had sex and um, so I went into the story that I had an affair with a married man and broke up their marriage when they found out I was pregnant. And before this, I was suicidal because I was living with memories of being molested as a child and stuff and God hated me and I just was suicidal. And then this happened at 20 and then I got pregnant. With that guy's baby? With this guy's baby. Okay. Got pregnant and because I was pregnant, I couldn't kill myself didn't know that this was God saving my life because now I have a purpose to live. Mm -hmm. And God saved me that day. Um, not knowing that I was raped because that looked like my childhood. Okay, so explain this to me. So you're saying that you, in your own mind, came up with this, this story that you were having an affair with a married man that I had an affair with a married man. It was just one day. Okay, so was he married? Yes. Okay, so he and really had was. a child. Okay, so you, my God. So you had, so this one day that this happened, 
you got pregnant. And so now that's the story that you go back and tell everybody that I had a one night of one night fling with somebody who was married. I had an affair oh, with yeah. a married man. Okay. So that makes it sound like I had multiple times with this guy because when you have an affair with a married man, that kind of sounds like you had multiple times. It's better than just being raped one night. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And that girls organization I was in, I was in that organization from 13 to 21. And because I got pregnant, unmarried, they kicked me out. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Because I was a bad example yes. to the girls. And I was devastated. I bet. And I had no support now. So where where's your parents in this? Did you ha you went to your parents and told them and I huh, so I went to bre um, lunch with my mom, told my mom. My mom took my dad to the mall to tell my dad. Now my dad won't go to the mall with my mom because that means uh, there's bad news coming. That's a big joke for it's my parents. <laughs> okay, but she took him to the mall because she didn't want him blowing up. Okay, so. The that's a smart woman. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So now he Now did you go. tell her after you, how did you find out you were pregnant? Like I was in this period? No, I was getting sick. Oh, okay. Um and when I found out, I went home and I had four tires on the side of the yard. I took those tires and chucked them in the back of my car. And I was like, what do I do? Um now the lady, wait, what, are the, what was the tires for? Uh, I was gonna go get the, my tires put, rotate the tires. Okay. And I thought they fit my car, but they didn't. So I had to unload the tires again. Um, I was just trying to deal with the fact that I was now pregnant, unmarried. I'm gonna have to tell my parents, my dad's gonna lose his gas. Right, so you were like, Dealing, this is how you're dealing with it emotionally. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to the to the rape really quick. Yeah. So you never saw him again. What did you do when you were done? I mean, did you tell him this was terrible or you just because you had to go there in your mind to act like you liked it? Like, how did you deal with that? So I told his friend, she happened to have his social security number, his date of birth, all his information, his wife's date of birth, social security, her information, her, his daughter's date of birth, social security information, ended up being his mistress. So I got all their information. When I wow. got a phone call from him, him trying to find her, I ended up telling him. What'd he say? He was like, um, and he hung up and uh, I didn't hear from him again until I was a due I was a month away from the due date and he threatened me. To kill you? Uh, he told me, if you name me as the father, I will take that child away from you and I will raise him and I will get custody because I'm married and I can raise that. I have the ability to raise that child. And you have a reputation that precedes you. Mm. He didn't know me, but he was gonna claim that I had a reputation that precedes me and he will get custody of that child. Okay, unfortunately we're out of time. We have yes. to stop. Ah, oh, my gosh, this is a cliffhanger. I am like ready to hear the rest <laughs> of the story. Like I'm being cliffhanged right now. Oh my gosh, Melanie. All right, well, thank you all for watching. Um, this is a terrible story, but this is gonna get so much better because God is, is I mean, you can see her today, yeah. living here today. She's already, obviously, well and knows how much Jesus loves her and forgives her for everything yeah. and takes all of this trauma out of her literally yes. and has healed her heart. So this is the good news. Yes. So thank you guys for watching. Now please track with us. If you're not tracking this, then something's wrong with you. You need to watch <laughs> you need to watch this one so that you can watch the next one next week. We will be back next week. Thank you guys so much. Go to healingjourneystoday.com to find out everything that's going on. We've got lots of, lots of things happening. We have a, a conference in uh, Minnesota, and that's gonna be September 6th and 7th. It's gonna be at River Valley Church in Lake Elmo. So you wanna go to healingjourneystoday.com, check out all of that so that you can sign up, so that you can also be free and know how much Jesus loves you. So we'll see you guys next time on the journey. Bye-bye.